Motorcyclist dies following crash with truck in Clarendon. A man who was injured in a crash with a truck along a roadway in Bullhead, Clarendon has succumbed. He is 22-year-old farmer Randy Black of Sunday River in the parish. Black passed away on Wednesday, the day after the college on. Reports were that about 4.10 p.m. on Tuesday, Black was driving a motorcycle along the roadway when he collided with the motor truck. Black suffered several injuries and was assisted to the Maypen Hospital, where he was admitted. He succumbed to his injuries the following morning. The Copsill Police are investigating the matter. Hanover brothers charge over gun machete attack on man. Two brothers who attack a man in Burnt Ground, Hanover have been charged. Dwayne Hilton, 36, otherwise called Gillow, and his 46-year-old brother, Carton Hilton, otherwise called Trees, both of Burnt Ground, are charged with shooting with intent, possession of prohibited weapon, using a prohibited weapon to commit a felony and unlawful wounding. The incident occurred in the community on Saturday, November 16. Reports from the Lucy Police are that about 9.40 a.m., a man was walking along a roadway when he was confronted by the wind who reportedly brandished a firearm and opened gunfire at him. The man reported the run and was attacked by Carlington, who allegedly used a machete to inflict wounds to the left side of his head and left hand. The man then escaped into the area. The police were summoned and while the man was being transported to hospital, he reported the saw Duane, whom he pointed out to the police. The lawmen apprehended him. On Sunday, November 17, Carlington was apprehended during a police operation. The brothers were charged on Tuesday, November 19. A court date for them is being finalized. Contract workers at municipal corporations reported the restive. Contract workers at the Allen's Municipal Corporation reported the restive over the delay in their transition to permanent employees. The government committed to transitioning the workers as of November 1, but this did not happen. Instead, some workers had their contracts renewed. It supported that the contract workers are being paid minimum wage and the move to permanent staff would mean increased salary and benefits applicable for public sector employees. The Jamaica Association of Local Government Offices served a three-day strike notice on the local government ministry last week advising the unrest among workers. The General Secretary, Helen Davis-White, said the workers were told that the delay is due to the municipal corporations being told to await instructions on the transition. She said the union was contacted and meetings have been scheduled. Meetings are also being arranged with the finance and labor ministries. The workers became very restive, however, when they began receiving information from municipal corporations that they had been asked to place everything on hold until they had gotten further directives as to how to proceed. And in some cases, they had actually begun extending the contract of the workers. That being so, we met with our delegates and they advised that the workers were very restive and were prepared to take industrial action as a result of which we issued a 72-hour strike notice last week Friday and it would expire today. Having issued that strike notice, we have had discussions with Minister of Finance, Honorable Paval Williams, as well as the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Local Government. And arising from those discussions, there will be a meeting next week, Tuesday, with the Services Commission, the Local Government Services Commission, which really has the authority to make the permanent appointment of the workers. And so we expect to be able to get from the Services Commission when we meet with them exactly what stage the appointment process is and some commitment that the workers will be appointed and will begin to receive new rates before the end of the year for sure. So we await that meeting and the Ministry of Labor is also on alert and they are in the process now of trying to arrange a date to meet with us and we expect that date may be next week, Wednesday or Thursday. So we have gotten the attention that was needed. Everything depends on what happens at the meeting of the Services Commission and at Labor when we expect the Ministry of Finance will be able to indicate whether the funds will be provided 
needed to pay the workers the amount in terms of increase in pay in keeping with the new public sector compensation structure. JLP is pending big box on CUS 81st annual conference. The Jamaica Labour Party will be spending some $76 million to stage its annual conference this Sunday at the National Arena in St. Andrew with no weapons or nosemakers, locally referred to as vocabulars, allowed inside the venue. Conference Chairman JLP Deputy Leader Desmond McKenzie on Thursday told a media briefing that the party intends to put a serious annual conference without the gimmick tree, which he said mark our representational politics conferences. We are not going to the National Arena on Sunday with any comedy. We are coming with a strong, clear message that will speak to the direction of the country. We are not going into the gimmicks thing. This is a party that is serious about our messaging, and we will stick on message, stated Mackenzie. Our conference will reinforce the fact that by virtue of actions we have taken and will take to improve the lives of the mass of Jamaicans, the Jamaica Labour Party is without doubt the stronger political party. We have better policies, a stronger team, and we have perhaps the greatest political leaders of modern time, Dr. Andrew Holness, added Mackenzie as he outlined the plans for the public session of the conference, which will have as its theme, active and strong. According to Mackenzie, Jamaica should expect something different at this conference, as the party moves to reiterate that it is serious about making the lives of Jamaican people better. This year's conference will definitely be the last one before a general election and we want to put on which will allow the country to continue to see us as the best option for this country, stated Mackenzie. He pointed out that provisions will be made for lesser firearm holders to leave their weapons at the offices of the Firearms Licensing Authority if they so desire and no weapon of any kind will be allowed into the arena. Turning to the noise-making imitation, which has become a staple at political, sporting and entertainment events in Jamaica in recent years, Mackenzie declared that the symbol of the JLP is the bell, and these are what should be ringing in the arena. The other people, I don't know what their symbol is, but the bell is a symbol for the Jamaica Labour Party, and we are urging supporters that the bell has a ring or symbol, and nothing else can replace it, declared Mackenzie. He pointed out that the popular noise makers have already been banned at several international sporting events as the disabled levels have been found to be damaging to people's hearing. Mackenzie also urged JLP supporters not to breach the rules of the road going to and coming from conference and implore them not to engage in the popular practice of riding on the top of the buses or with their bodies hanging out through the windows of moving vehicles. He further urged JLP supporters traveling to the National Arena to obey the instructions of the police as he pointed out that there will be a traffic change in the vicinity of the stadium complex on Sunday even before the conference begins at 10 a.m. In the meantime, JLP Communications Officer Dr. Dana Morris Dixon told the media briefing that it is clear the anticipation is building for the conference. She noted that as usual, the main address will come from Holness who will give a comprehensive update to the nation on how his administration will intensify the space at which we are delivering on the mission of Jamaica achieving economic independence and delivery prosperity for all. Dixon added that the conference will also feature addresses from a number of speakers who will update the country how progress has been made by the Jamaica Labour Party government in various sectors including health, transport, technology, foreign affairs, agriculture, water along with labor and social security. She said Jamaicans will hear more on how Holness administration is actively putting policies in place to further address their concerns. Remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.